Hi, I'm William, reporting for the Fun Robotics Network. I'm here at the Australian Championship with Team 11146, the Barker Redbacks. They have one of the most unique designs in Decode. It is to learn about their strategy, how they've innovative intake system, of linear, in linear intake system, all on behind the bus. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. If your team is looking for inspiration, check out the Studica Robotics FTC Starter Bot to get you going. Studica Robotics structure options are available in multiple colors with new components now available. Build better robots and receive a 25% discount off most kits and parts and apply for team grants when you go to studica.com robots. So going into the season, this is a really unique robot. What was the strategy behind this? Yeah, so going into the season straight away, we as a team decided to go for a bit of a simpler robot. We recognise each year that the Australian season is pretty short, so building a robot that's a bit simpler but reaching its full potential is much more effective in a competitive manner than building the most complicated robot but kind of underdoing it in terms of programming and drive practice. We realised through experience that um, programming and drive practice are crucial elements to each competition. And having a simple robot, or not a simple robot, but a simpler robot allows us to really focus on that programming and focus on that drive practice and yield effective results at the competition. So yeah, um, with that, we decided to you know ditch any indexing mechanism and just go for the linear transfer system, which is really you know improving on our efficiency as a robot, um, focusing on the scoring potential of it, and yeah, just going all out scoring for the fastest cycles possible. So starting off with our, the intake system, how does that overall run? And I see you have some server, Melanbotic servos to run it. Could you explain that as well? Yeah, so for the intake, we decided to only use one motor for the whole system. So at the front, we're using this rev bear motor connected through the HD3 pulley ratio, which allows the intake to spin at roughly 3000 RPM at full power. Um, then we're using the Go Builder boot wheels, which help vector the ball in, along with these passive 3D printed guides on the front. This is just really allowing for the concept of touch it and own it to be demonstrated through the robot. Like if we touch the ball, it's inside the system and that just really improves the efficiency for the driver. So once we move past this intake, this is pivoting just on these two bearings in here, but then it's being held down by the weight of the motor and the gravity within that. Moving on, then it's vectored in through these flex wheels here and these boot wheels in here which are all powered by two Melanbotics super servos on each side. These have allowed us to have both a fast and rapid intake without taking up too much of that precious motor budget, allowing us to allocate it onto other subsystems. So these, super, these servos are running at 1000 RPM connected to these belts internally, which bring the ball through the linear system. Super servos such as this have been really important for us during the season, allowing us to, you know, get the fast motion we need without taking up a motor. Um, so yeah, they've been really unique and really powerful in that way for us. We use these aluminium rods on the inside, which help vector the ball inwards. These have been really efficient once again because of the low coefficient of friction. The ball is able to easily slide on them and be powered through these belts to, from the front of the intake to reach then the back shooter. Once we reach the back of the shooter, we have these kicker wheels in here, once again flex wheels, powered by this motor down here. Uh, um, at our regional competition, we were actually using an Axon servo for that, but we worked out over time that the servo wasn't fast enough for this use case, so that resulted in the feeding not being as fast as we would desire. So going into the season, obviously I mentioned our main goal was our efficiency. The servo not spinning fast enough was heavily reducing our shot speed, so we were taking about one and a half seconds to get rid of all the three. So going into this national competition here, we changed that to be powered off a 1600 RPM motor, um, which has heavily increased the efficiency of the system, allowing us to get our rapid like fire rate down to roughly half a second, which has just been really crucial for the season, eliminating any threat of defense, because as we get to a position the driver can hold the button and the balls come out essentially all as one. So yeah, Ollie will now demonstrate the intake system. So as you can see, the front intake roller gets contacted by the balls, um, then vectoring it inwards. 
and being fed out by the feeder roller. So yeah, this has proved really effective for us over the season, allowing for that fast ink tape time and yeah, being able to touch the ball and own it. So now I'll move on to the shooter. Um, the shooter is obviously quite going to be quite a unique part of this robot. We designed it in mind of being as low as possible, as low to the ground as possible, um, to facilitate our initial idea for a climb. So our initial idea was that for the climb was to be able to tilt up like this, allowing the opponent to park underneath. However, going into nationals, while this was a planned upgrade, we decided to not actually implement it due to wanting to increase uh, the feeder speed. Um, so, because we're at eight motors, we couldn't use the motor for the climber and instead decided to put that onto the feeder as cutting that, spe spe the cutting that feeder speed down by three times was able to just increase our points more than the 15 we would have gained from the climb, um, while also reducing the weight of the robot as a whole, once again coming back to the whole thing of efficiency. Yeah, so for the shooter, um, we're using a solid urethane Fairlane wheel um, that's 2.5 inches in diameter, coupled with two aluminium flywheels on each side, with the internal part pocketed out in order to decrease the mass while still re remaining with a, a sufficient level of inertia. Um, something else which is pretty unique about it is the fixed hood. So going into the season, we were obviously prototyping with a lot of different hoods, especially up into the national competition. So one that we had before was this pivoting hood, where it would be able to switch between two states. However, with that, we kind of realized there was always going to be an inconsistency with this design. With the hood moving, that introduced play into the system and would just introduce elements that might not allow for the exact same shot every time. So with that, we obviously, as I've mentioned many times before, wanted to just go hard on our efficiency and our reliability, which is two things which lends to the simpler robot. So we decided to go for the fixed angle, more horizontal hood, which allows us to really fire that shot out with a great, um, great velocity into the goal to ensure it doesn't bounce out each time. Yeah, um, the shooter's powered off two Go Builder Bear motors with a HD3 ratio in it. The belts are under tension slightly in order to improve the efficiency of the motor since the output shaft runs on a bushing. Um, if the belts are tensioned too heavily, we found the shooters running at a lower efficiency compared to this. So that took a lot of testing and prototyping in order to find the ideal tension while also not making the belt skip. Um, I'll also talk about the chassis as our chassis is pretty unique, I think, as well. So with the chassis, our side plate's made out of 7075 aluminium, that's six mil thick. One of the key properties of the 7075 grade of aluminium is its um, inherent strength over other grades. This allows us to pocket it really heavily, as you can see on the side. The ribbing we do is very, very aggressive, um, which leads to much lower weights in the chassis. So each of those plates is only weighing roughly 50 grams, while also retaining as much rigidity as possible. So yeah. So I see that there's, I think all of the viewers are curious about what this stick is for. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, um, so going into nationals, we decided to pursue um, a pretty unique avenue for our strategy, um, which culminated in this blocker. So what this serves to do is to reach over our frame perimeter into the opponent robot and block their shots from exiting their shooter. This provides a really unique um, strategy for us um, mainly as we focus on the far zone, being able to do our cycles, but then also completely waste another robot's three cycles. So yeah, that's worked pretty well for us. Um, obviously with the blocker, we wanted to remain as light as possible. So we use these two carbon fiber rods on each side with then an aluminum plate at the top for the rigidity. Um, yeah, it's proved really effective for us over the course of this competition and definitely a unique avenue for strategy. So now moving on from the machine side, what are some of the software controls that you have for the robot and how you improve your efficiency and, and accuracy? Yeah, so for software on this robot, due to it being quite a simple robot, it left us quite a significant amount of time to implement our vision system. So using the limelight, we run a dual system for um, driver control, where from the close zone, when we're scoring from the close zone, we normalize the heading from the limelight to decrease the noise and then aim directly at the tag due to it being centered on the goal at that angle. But then in the far zone, this can lead to your shots being off because you're so far away that the tag is no longer centered. So instead, 
we run a pose estimation software through the limelight to determine our pose on the field and we then set a pose of where we want the goal, which can be manually adjusted by the operator during the teleoperator period. This allows us to maintain a consistent shot from both the close zone and the far zone through the same camera. And then, at the same time, we're also running a linear interpolation on the shooter's velocity, allowing different shots to have different speeds through a tree map, where the upper and lower boundaries are then averaged out through the distance. This allows us to have a very consistent shot even when dri the driver is slightly out of, its nor of their normal position through both the heading and the interpolation of the shooter velocity. And then obviously we wanted to decrease the amount of buttons that the um, driver had to press during the and the operator had to press to allow for them to look more at the field and what their strategy would be for the remaining time period. So we have multiple modes in which the robot acts. The shooter is always spinning up to maintain the inertia and its velocity and continuously running that head so that it will always find the correct velocity. And then at the same time, we have one button to intake, the driver will hold and intake, and then one to lock onto the heading and one to shoot, allowing for us to have a very simple controller that will allow us to never have to take our hands off the joysticks during teleoperator period. And then for autonomous, we decided to only use, not to use the limelight and focus on the Go Builder Pinpoint V2. So with this, we have two odometry pods, one that allows us to focus on the, direct, the forward and backward motion and one on the traversal of the field using the Mecklen wheels. And then this is an absolute IMU from Go Builder, the Go Builder Pinpoint V2, which allows us to have a very accurate pose estimation of where we are on the field. So to create the most consistent autonomous, we use that to aim at the heading with hard numbers that will always hit the same numbers as long as setup is correct. Thank you very much for sharing this uh, incredible robot. This has been 11146 of the Barker Redbacks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. If your team is looking for inspiration, check out the Studica Robotics FTC Starter Bot to get you going. Studica Robotics structure options are available in multiple colors with new components now available. Build better robots and receive a 25% discount off most kits and parts and apply for team grants when you go to studica.com slash robots. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first.